Have you ever found yourself going on a journey or going in a direction that you were so certain God is leading you on only for you to now get on that journey and less than two minutes in you're feeling like, okay, I'm all alone. God, where are you? This doesn't make any sense. You know, you feel like as though God has led you into the wilderness only to leave you high and dry. Well, that's what your girl has been going through the past couple of months, hence my silence. But I'm not here to just even necessarily make this video about me. I'm here to share with you guys the lessons I've learned in this journey um, and also the importance of even why God is literally taking me here. If you'd asked me this maybe like two, three months ago, I probably wouldn't have this perspective. If I'm being honest with you, I would not be able to share what I'm sharing with you today. I'm talking pretty fast. Um, this is what I do. But let's just get right into it today as we do it in God. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that when I started this year, 2022, I shared with everybody, pretty much the world, that this year is my year of divine alignment. Um, and arriving at that destination or that place wasn't something I just came up with on my own. It wasn't something I came up with on a whim. It was literally something I really felt God leading me to do. Like, well, technically, we should all be divinely aligned to God, right? That's what it was supposed to do as believers. But I just felt this strong urgency to literally like, I guess, be intentional about doing that this year, you know? And so, well, yeah, what was I? Shiloh came and interrupted me real quick. <laughs> Motherhood never stops. It's never interrupted. Um, but yeah, divine, um, divine alignment. I was so sure this was the direction that God was leading me in to be more intentional about pursuing it like never before. And I said, yes. And I publicly declared it as well. And the truth is, when I said yes, I thought I knew not necessarily 100% what it would entail, but I thought I had an idea, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you guys. And let me tell you right now, we're now in August, going into September. And if I'm being honest with you, I had no idea what I entailed. Um, it's been a long journey of shedding, <laughs> unlearning, um, testing, <laughs> purification, purifying, refining, whatever it is you want to call it. I'm out of words, but I will say this much that um, I've been stripped of a lot of things. Um, and I, and, and to, the, to a certain degree, the stripping wasn't what really got to me or made me feel, or yeah, th that wasn't the hardest part. The hardest part was when I got to a place where I felt alone, where I literally felt like God had literally forgotten about your girl. I'm just being honest with you guys. And it made no sense to me because I'm like, you led me in this direction, right? And I was, as much as life is life and I've been so busy with my business, my kids, my job and everything, I literally was very, very committed to this new journey that God was taking me on. And so I just didn't understand why and how everything was just shifting the way it was. Ministry wise, everyone's, you know, sending me inboxes on Instagram saying, oh, what happened to the invisible room? You're not going live anymore. My YouTube video stopped. Um, even when I'll pick up the word. I struggled. I'm just being honest with you guys. Okay. Thank you. Shut the door. <laughs> I love my babies. That is one thing that has been a consistent though in this entire journey. Sidebar. You know, but pretty much um, while I was on my journey to divine alignment or while I have been on my journey to divine alignment with God, I realized that literally I knew not even anywhere close to what I thought I knew when it comes to what God means when he says, you know, abide in me and I in you, um, you know, do like literally abandon everything you think, you know, and come with me. Right. I think of the story of Abraham. When God said to Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12, he says, leave your father in your mother's house. Right. And go to a place I will show you. As a matter of fact, let me read the NLT version for you. <laughs> this blew me away when I saw it. I was like, oh my God. In the new living translation of Genesis 12, 1, it says that the Lord has said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. The key thing that stood out to me here that I never caught before was native, right? That's literally the core of who you are, your background, your essence, your culture, your mindset. Literally, God wasn't just asking Abraham to leave a particular geographic location. He was literally telling him to abandon every and anything he thought he knew. Leave everything, okay? And then go to a place I would show you. He didn't just give him the immediate option when he said he should abandon those things. He didn't instruct, he didn't tell Abraham what the new mindset, the new culture was going to be. 
It didn't present to him the idea of even the future of making him the father of, you know, so many generations and Israel and all that. No, he didn't even give him any inkling of what that would be. He just said, I will show you. The one thing I realize now that I did not understand or quite understand when I began this journey um, is that the first step to divine alignment or the foundation of being divine and aligned to God is not is, is the willingness to abandon everything you know, but it doesn't just stop there, but also the willingness to be to embrace God's way, even when you don't really understand the fullness of it. Mm. And if we're going to be honest as human beings, if we're going to trade something for another, we, we definitely want to know all the details, right? <laughs> if you're going to take your car to a dealership right now and you want to trade it for a better car or what you think might be a better car, I guarantee you, you've done your research to know what the specs are and to get that upgrade. Nobody ever wants to downgrade, right? Or nobody ever wants to trade without knowing what comes to the car. You're going to ask all the, the history and the details behind the car, the mileage, um, you know, how many users has the car had before you and so on and so forth, the date, the model, the warranty information, so many things. But in this case, God was telling Abraham, literally abandon your car, abandon that one thing that you have as your strong sense of security as your pillar and follow me. Follow you, okay, where you leading me to? I'll show you. Okay. And that right there had me just feeling like, what? <laughs> I didn't understand it. I didn't, and if I'm, and in hindsight now, if I'm going to be honest with myself, when I felt God leading me to go on this journey of divine alignment, I didn't ask any questions. I just said yes. And I don't think to a certain degree, I don't think I was as patient as I should have been. I call myself out. I don't think I was. And so that's the number one thing I learned in this, in this um, process is that to be divinely aligned to God, <laughs> you're not going to have the answers. God doesn't want you coming expecting that, expecting him to provide you all the details at the beginning or the onset of the journey. It's in the process that you will get, you know, not, not even the fullness of the details, because I don't think we're ever going to get the fullness because that's why God is God, right? But you get more details as needed as you go along on the journey, as long as you stay aligned. You know, I think of the scripture when Jesus talks about the straight and the narrow path. And, you know, when I think about it, I, I can envision why it's easy for a lot of folks to end up falling into the wide path. Because the straight and narrow literally requires so much undivided attention, one, unto the Father, um, two, dedication to staying on that path, even when it takes so much out of you, even when it requires so much effort to just make sure you don't fall onto the wide path, you know, and it's easy for any one of us, myself included, to find ourselves in the, in the wide if we're not careful. Um, and if I'm being honest with you guys, actually, I think on this journey so far, I have been on the wide. I find myself there sometimes. Um, fast forward because I don't want to make this video too long. I just found myself struggling, as I shared earlier, with opening the word and just not getting anything. Scriptures that I'd read before that made sense to me, or at least gave me something, just felt, it just felt flat. And it made no sense to me. I struggled. And for those who are not necessarily are not familiar with my background or, or new to this platform, my background is that I come from a Muslim background, okay? which I'll be sharing more details. I think it's past overdue for me to share the actual story behind that as to how I got saved. So I'll share that very soon in the near future. But one thing I can say I thank God for is that since the day I gave my life to Christ, every time I open up the word, it just jumps alive to me. You know, effortlessly, he gives me something, something tangible to hold on to. And for the first time, I was getting nothing. <laughs> and that's why you've not seen me online much because I'm not going to give what I don't have. You know, some folks can kind of fake it to they make it, right? They'll, they feel that um, need to deliver because people are waiting. And so they forget about what's critical, which is to make sure that they are actually in right standing. I wasn't going to be that person. So every once in a while, I would share online as I felt led to. But as far as the effortless flow, it just wasn't coming anymore. And that led me to a place of doubt in my calling, if I'm being honest with you. It also led me to a place of depression because the last thing I wanted was to actually you know was to find myself in the place of after so much that I've gone through on my journey with God to now find myself feeling lost and abandoned um 
I'm young, but this Christian journey has cost me quite a lot. Again, I'll share more details as we go further on the journey in the next couple of weeks, God willing. But it definitely went to a place of depression and doubt. Sometimes I couldn't even share with my own husband, who was my best friend. I literally could not even share with him. I was just, I would just literally sit down quietly within myself and be just talking to God and asking God, okay, God, are you still for me? Is there something I've done wrong? Why am I not hearing from you clearly? Why do I just feel like you just don't want to use me any longer? I mean, it became really bad, but the attack, the mind, the, 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 my mind was literally a battlefield. I'm not even going to lie to you. Everything the enemy could deposit into my mind, he deposited into my mind. He psyched me up really bad to where I literally doubted every single move I made. So even when I would pick up the Bible, I didn't feel worthy to even get anything from the word. Um, but what I didn't understand then that I understand now is God's silence is not an indication or evidence of the fact that he's not present. It's not an indication of, of him not being, being um, involved because <laughs> he is God and he's a father and he's forever, ever interested in what concerns his children. Um, so what I didn't realize that was that God was more concerned about keeping me in that place. Even if that meant I was going to be in a place of a, a place of obscurity from the public eye, even if that meant that I was not necessarily going to get the rema and revelation that I, I so desired more than all of that, what really mattered to God was for him to just keep me, keep me, right? Keep my soul, keep my mind. And while I was so focused on, or while, while I allowed this moment of me just being in this pause to define, I guess, the state and quality of my relationship with God, that was still faithful enough to preserve me. Fast forward to maybe like a month and a half ago, I attended an event and I was just looking forward to just encountering God. And I looked around me and I'm seeing so many people that are just experiencing God. But with me, it just felt like everything again was just flat. And I was just crying out so desperately, crying so desperately to just feel God and nothing. In that moment, the only thing I heard was, you should be dead and gone, but I have kept you. That is more than enough. Ooh. And if you really want to know me and if you really want to feel me and hear me, like you used to, or even maybe deeper than that, then you got to do the work. You are not entitled to my presence. You're not entitled to the revelation of the word. You're not entitled to anything that comes along with being saved. It's by my grace alone. But if you want to do, but if you really are that desperate for it, then you have to do what you haven't done before. See, what I did not realize in that moment was that subconsciously I had become accustomed to a certain way of approaching the word. I had become accustomed to a certain way of doing the Christian thing. Hey, I'm putting myself on blast today. And while that worked for a very long time, God was calling me to go higher and deeper. God was calling me to go to a different place that when he said, you know, be divinely aligned with me, it's like there's so much going on in our world right now. So many things are shifting that we as believers just can't afford to be, you know, to be just, I guess, soaring above and just getting by. We just can't. We're going to end up being casualties, if I'm being honest, of everything around us if we don't really find ourselves in that deep, hidden place. Um, and he was challenging me, pretty much. So the entire time he was silent, it wasn't like he wasn't speaking, but I was still trying to communicate to God from literally in the place that I was versus meeting him in a place he was calling me to. And so in the past month now, thank God by his grace, I'm getting to that place. I'm not even there yet. I'm getting to that place of, you know, going deeper and pushing myself to, to engage God in a level that he requires for me in this season. Um, now I say all this to say that I don't know who might find themselves in a place where they just feel like God is not speaking to them, who might find themselves in a place where they feel like God has just abandoned them or maybe God has no use for them. I'm just here to tell you that that is not true. God definitely has use for you. He has a plan for you. I say this every time that as long as you're still breathing in air, there's still purpose in you because God does not waste his resources. God is not going to waste your soul, waste the air he's putting into your lungs if he still doesn't have a plan for you. So 
hold on to that. There is a plan for you. But I want to challenge you to begin to engage God on a level, in a level that you've not engaged in before. Endeavor to, to just not be complacent in where you are or doing things exactly how you've been doing it for so long. God is like literally things are shifting so fast right now in the spiritual that God can't even speak to you in the normal way anymore because nothing is normal about the world we're living in anymore. Nothing is normal about the playing field any longer. A lot has changed. So we must also change our game plan for the lack of words. I want to read to you from the book of Jeremiah 33.3 where scripture says, Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Ooh, the most infamous version of this scripture says, Call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable or mighty things that you do not know. But I love the New Living Translation because it says, Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets. That's the key word, secrets. You do not know about things to come. In order for you to, to learn of the secrets of the kingdom, you have to go into the deep secret place. You got to go deeper. And sometimes to go deeper, you got to drop some weight too. <laughs> you got to drop a lot of things. Like I said, whatever you're familiar with, whatever's native to you, whatever, whatever is native to you, whatever is familiar with you, to you, cultural, whatever it is, tradition, you got to abandon all those things to go deeper. Otherwise, those things will slow you down in the process of you trying to be aligned to God. Matthew 11, 28 um, to 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He words, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This was literally the scripture that kind of like did, you know, sealed it all for me. The aha moment, because I'll be honest with you. When I say I was weary, I was weary. When I say I was burdened, I was burdened because I just didn't feel the presence of God the way I, I wanted to or the way I anticipated I was going to. Um, and, I, and that's one thing I am afraid of. Living without God's presence, uh-uh. <laughs> I can't do anything without God. If there's one thing I know, okay, that I'm, I can unashamed, is that a word? Unashamedly, is that a word? Say to anyone is that I am nothing outside of God. Cliche, but it's true. I've come a long way in this journey to know that. And it says, I will give you rest. So the antidote for weariness and heavy burdens, right? Anxiety is literally rest. Does that make sense? Does that ring a bell to anybody? Yeah, rest. So being a place of rest literally means no activity, right? That's where I've been the past couple of months. Again, I didn't realize that's what God was doing. He was keeping me. Just imagine being incubated. <laughs> I was in incubation and you might actually be there too. And I just want you to see that it's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a beautiful place to be. It really truly is. And it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul, for your soul. I know I did a lot of rambling in this video. Um, yeah, I've not been on the camera in a long time and I just wanted to come in here and just speak from my heart as the Lord leads. Um, no scripts, no outlines, just Toyo C sharing as God leads and as God permits her to do. Um, I want to wrap up this video by just telling you that to seek out God, the journey of seeking out God and, and actually abiding in God is definitely not an easy one, but it is worth it. And yes, there will be chapters where things just make no sense. There will be some dark chapters. There will be some chapters that are unclear that come with so many hurdles and challenges. But I want to encourage you to just hold on to the author and the finisher of, the, of your faith, the journey of your life. He's there. There's no way he's the author and the finisher and he will not be in between all the chapters or every stage of the story. If he is the author and the finisher, He's definitely there right in between too. I'm going to wrap up for now. And again, this is just a, I don't want to call it a, a holy ramble, <laughs> but this was just from my heart to yours. It's good to be able to share with you guys again. I pray that I will have the, the grace and the privilege to do it again very soon. Um, like I always tell you guys, I mean, I have all the answers. I mean, I know it all, but I'm glad. I know the one that does and that's Christ Jesus. So you can know him. if this video has blessed you, please comment below share with a friend, um, engage me in any way you think you can. 
because it would encourage me as well to know that this me being obedient and deciding to share this openly is not in vain. All right. Until next time, blessings and love. Ciao.